Tommy, I did a full show about your court hearing. It's going to be on my show tonight. But just for the folks on Twitter, what the hell just happened in there? What was that guy from the Evening Standard newspaper doing? I, and I have never seen anything like it. So I've gone into court. I've wrote my address down. Obviously, I have threats to my life. People are aware of that. I've wrote my address down. The judge has my address. They've then argued that they want the address read out in public court. So then it's in public court. So then they can report. So when they do their report, they say Stephen Lennon of and give my exact address. That's what they're arguing. Your, ad your address is not in the public interest. Nothing turns on it. There was no crime committed there. The police know where you live. The judge knows where you live. The lawyers know where you live. But this judge, this reporter, the judge, the, ju the, judge ruled, the judge ruled, you have to now read out your address. But what was crazy is this journalist just stood up and argued for five minutes that he has the right to let to let my address. I, I, and it's not like they don't. It's not like they're not aware there's threats to my life. The, and I said to, that's why I stood up when the judge said read your address. I said. You want me to read out and endanger my family? Well, the judge knows the answer. Yeah. And yeah, she's got it in front of her. So again, this case is nothing to do with a dispersal order. This case, that that incident there is nothing to do with justice. It's to do with damaging me, to endangering me. It's to do with an attack. This is an attack on freedom of speech. It's an attack on me personally. It's an attack on freedom of the press. Uh, it's total control. As I said, I'm not. I have to leave. Ezra, I've got. I'm meeting someone now. Yeah, who's in London to do a podcast. Yeah, Katie Hopkins. She's not. Um, but I have to leave London. So she has to leave London. We now have to travel out of London, otherwise I go to jail. It, the whole thing's absurd. I just want one more fact because our viewers back in Canada and America won't know what this means. In the UK, there's a special thing called an Osman warning. When the police have an actionable, credible threat against anyone's life, they're obligated to personally hand deliver a letter saying, here's the threat to your life, don't say we didn't tell you. You've received 12 of those hand-delivered death threats from the police. I've received 12. My ex-wife has received three. This has been, this has been a, coordinated, a coordinated effort to highlight where my children live by Hope Not Hate and organisations like this. They've tried to, as I said, they live-streamed. My family had to sell their last home because it's in the film I Made Silence. They live stream where my family live. This is and coordinated. You, your lawyer mentioned that to the judge, mentioned that to the Evening Standard, but they wanted to... I've just... Like, this wasn't even... This is the first time, because every other court I've ever been to, the judge, the prosecutor says, we have no problem, we know he's in danger. The judge says, I know you're in danger. I know your address would bring trouble. It's like it would bring trouble. The, the main thing I said is that, that they removed they remove me from London. They, they gave me a dispersal order from London because the organiser of the anti-Semitism rally said he'd be made to feel tense. I don't know how one person can disperse. Like, they can't. Like, they can't. They can't. Like, like, normally you say there's a crowd. The crowd must disperse. How does one person disperse? They can't. And no matter what, the police had made the decision I was being arrested, even if I, because I, I didn't get a chance to leave. They made the decision I was getting arrested. And the reason being, so they could give me the conditions that I've had now for three months, going to be six months. Do not enter London. Do not attend rallies. You know, I'm glad you got a good lawyer. I mean, you know, the saying, you need a good lawyer, but what you really need is a good judge. This woke judge, I've never seen the collusion between a judge and, a, and the, the regime media like this before, but... I, all, I, all I say, give me a jury. Give me 12 members of the British public. I've never had a trial. I'm back up again. I, I'm go, so on, I'm on trial 22nd, 23rd of April. It's going to be in another court in Westminster, but no jury. So that's five months you're banned from the city because some left wing hack said you made him feel tense i i just that's just clear two-tier policing i'm sure a lot of people make brits feel tense these hamas riders the, the, the demonstrations have gone on weekly have made the whole country feel tense climbing up our, our war memorials it's like I, you might cause someone distress no they've caused us distress national distress week in week out the whole country's under distress from what we've what has been allowed to happen to our capital city what's been allowed to happen to our country all over our country none of these conditions are being put on any islamic radicals any jihadists nothing well, I'm going to do my best to attend on April 22nd and April 23rd. I'm going to check to make sure I can. You know, it's been a while since I've covered your trials, really before the pandemic. Um, I remember now how infuriating they were because I would sit in court with all these other journalists. There's a guy from Press Association. There's a guy from the Evening Standard. There was a couple guys who didn't want to tell me their name. And I just know when I read their coverage today, it's going to be like they were watching a totally different movie than me. The problem, 
the problem is, the problem is, we've re you've read the police statements, they're lies. They say that I was going to escape justice and I was trying to... There's 30 cops on you, you're handcuffed. They say I was trying to flee. But what they do is, when it gets to trial, they'll read out those statements or the police officers will say those things. The, the papers will then run, Tommy Robinson tried to attack police officer and flee, yeah? And then when I get convicted, the media will pump that. And that's what happens. If, time and time again, it's a total, it's a total fabrication, it's not reality. Everyone watched, everyone saw what I was arrested for. Well, it's a seven-hour flight for me to come from Toronto, but I don't mind it. I sleep on the plane. We've set up a special website called TommyTrial.com. It's the website we used when we covered Tommy's earlier trial. We've revived it. I'm going to put all my videos there, and, and uh, when appropriate, I'm going to put other legal documents there. I will do my best to be back in the city April 22 or 23. I don't think I have any conflicts, so I'll be here. And uh, that's it from Westminster Magistrates Court with Tommy Robinson, the most prosecuted man in the UK.